So now we will discuss the summary of chapter 9. So transport layer. The data networks and the internet support the human network by supplying reliable and communi reliable communication between people. On a single device, people can use multiple applications and services such as email, the web, and instant messages to send message or retrieve information. Data from each of these applications is packaged, transported, and delivered to the appropriate application on the destination device. The processes described in the OSI transport layer accept data from the application layer and prepare it for addressing at the network layer. A source computer communicates with the receiving computer to decide how to break data, break up data into segments, how to make sure none of the segments get lost, and how to verify all the segments arrive. When thinking about the transport layer, think of a shipping department preparing a signal, single order of multiple packages of delivery. Role of the transport layer the transport layer is responsible, responsible for establishing a temporary communication session between two applications and delivering data between them. An application generates data that is sent from an application on a source host to an application on a destination host. This is without regard to the destination host type the type of data over which the data must travel, the path taken by the data, the congestion on a link or the size of the network. The transport layer is the link between the application layer and the lower layers that are responsible for network transmission. Conversation Multiplexing Sending some types of data, for example, a streaming video. Across a network, as one complete communication stream can consume all of the available bandwidth. This will then prevent other communications from occurring at the same time. It would also make error, recovery, and retransmission of damaged data difficult. The segmenting the data into smaller chunks enables many different communications from many different users to be interleaved or multiplexed on the same network. To identify each segment of data, the transport layer adds a header containing binary data organized into several fields. It is the values in the it is the values in these fields that enables various transport layer protocols to perform different functions in managing data communication. Transport layer reliability. The transport layer is also responsible for managing reliability requirements of a conversation. Different applications have different transport reliability requirements. IP is concerned only with the structure, addressing, and routing of packets. IP does not specify how the delivery or transportation of the packets takes place. Transport protocols specify how to transfer messages between hosts. TCP or IP provides two transport layer protocols. Transmission Control Protocol or the TCP and User Datagram Protocol or UDP. IP uses these transport protocols to enable hosts to communicate and transfer data. TCP is considered a reliable, full-featured transport layer protocol which ensures that all, the, all of the data arrives at the destination. However, this requires additional fields in the TCP header which increases the size of the packet and also increases delay. In contrast, 
UDP is a simpler transport layer protocol that does not provide for reliability. It therefore has fewer fields and is faster than TCP. So, Chapter 9, Transport Layer The transport layer provides transport-related services by first, dividing data received from an application into segments. Second, adding a header to identify and manage is each segment. Third, using the header information to reassemble the segments back into application data. And the last thing is passing the assembled data to the correct application. So UDP and TCP are common transport layer protocols. UDP datagrams and TCP segments have headers added in front of the data that include a source port number and destination port number. These port numbers enable data to be directed to the correct application running on the destination computer. TCP does not pass any data to the network until it knows that the destination is ready to receive it. TCP then manages the flow of the data and resends any data segments that are not acknowledged as being received at the destination. TCP uses mechanism of handshaking, timers, acknowledgement messages, and dynamic windowing to achieve reliability. The reliability process, however, imposes overhead on the network in terms of much larger segment headers and more network traffic between the source and destination. If the application data needs to be delivered across the network quickly, or if network bandwidth cannot support the overhead of control messages being exchanged between the source of the destination systems, UDP would be the developer's preferred transport layer protocol. UDP provides none of the TCP reliability features. However, this does not necess necessarily mean that the communication itself is unreliable. There are many mechanisms in the application layer protocols and services that process lost or delayed datagrams if the application has these requirements. So the application developer decides the transport layer protocol that the best meets the requirements for the application. It is important to remember that the other layer all play a part in data network communications and influences its performance. So that's all for the summary of chapter 9. Now we will discuss on the next video the summary of chapter 10. So we have two last chapters. See you.